some, some of our audience are, are, are brand new to EB-5 and they're not 100% sure how the whole jobs analysis calculation works. If you don't mind, maybe just take a couple of minutes and kind of take a step back and explain the direct, indirect, and induced, what they all mean, and how the jobs multipliers work and how they work from different census tracts and why they're different from, let's say, if you're doing a construction project in California versus New York or Florida. Sure, sure. The um, geography matters a lot. And the way you're supposed to determine the geography that you use is based on where the inputs of production will come from. And, you know, that's difficult because there's not a lot of, you know, two by fours produced in Manhattan. And so you need an area bigger than just a county. And so the way we do it is we look at commuting patterns uh, to determine the, the most likely area of where inputs of production will come from. Some people do it other ways. The bigger the region, the bigger the geography, the higher the multipliers, generally, not always, but generally. So it used to be that some people would try to use like the whole state of California instead of just the commuting pattern for Los Angeles or something like that. Um, USCIS clamped down on that quite a few years ago. Um, so first you look at the geography, we use commuting patterns, and then you look at usually two phases, construction, development, um, and then operations. So under the construction phase, we typically, and most economists, look at the construction budget, the full development budget, and we categorize all those line items from the budget and then assign them to a, a REMS code, uh, which then has a specific multiplier associated with it. And that's the formula you were mentioning, Priya. It's pretty simple math and out pops three three jobs numbers. There's other numbers that come out of that too. Um, the direct impacts, indirect, and induced. Direct are the ones that happen basically right at the project site. That things that are that are going on be either from construction or operations that are happening right there. Indirect are the things that need to come into the project site. So if you have two by fours going into the building, the people that made those two by fours or the doors or the windows from somewhere else, those are the indirect impacts. And then induced impacts come from when all those workers, be they direct or indirect workers, go out and spend their paychecks and buy food and cars and those kinds of things. So it's, it's, it's the whole picture when you're looking at, at all three types of uh, jobs. And, and when you pull up, you know, the, the census data, um, what, what, you know, if you're creating jobs, um, let's say in midtown Manhattan, it's going to be different than if you're in rural Florida. Why is it that, uh, you know, a million dollars in hard construction activity generates a different number of jobs, let's say in, in New York versus Florida? because they have different um, economic baselines. They, they have different industries uh, in the different geographies. So um, Manhattan would be very service oriented um, as would DC also, uh, where somewhere like Ohio, uh, they have a lot of manufacturing. So uh, you would see really high construction multipliers in places like Ohio, much higher than DC. Um, in fact, a I, lot higher, it's crazy. And I think it's fascinating because a lot of people don't know that there are people within the government that keep track of all this data and all this data is useful for various other parts of the government. And I think for our audience, it's, 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 it's good to know that, you know, th these aren't just made up numbers. These are numbers that come in from, what, from the census data and other, other parts of the government. And these are pretty accurate, you know, for the most part. They really are. And it's kind of interesting um, to, to back up to finish um, what I was saying about the two phases. So construction and then operations. When we look at operations, we generally use revenue want you know just a 12 month slice of revenue to see the impact of operations and so again we put the numbers in and associate it with the proper multiplier from rims and we get direct indirect and induced uh, impacts from that 
when you look at the direct jobs that are created from just the model, the direct jobs, so that would be the people working in a hotel, and you know, if the hotel was the project, it's pretty darn close to the actual number of people that are actually working in the hotel. So, you know, you can compare the real numbers of workers to what the model says, and it's pretty accurate.